Hello everyone. So since last weekend was Mother's Day, I decided I wanted to do my birth story video. Um, I am in Jack's room as you can see and it's a mess. Trying, I'm trying to put it so I'm blocking most of it so you guys can't see it. So he was born on March 23rd at 6 in the morning. Um, mind you, that was a Friday. That Tuesday before that, we had a really big snowstorm, and I was, I had been having cramps since that Monday, and I went in that Monday to my OB, and I was already, um, starting to dilate. I was at one centimeter that day, so, um, I knew things were happening, and that the snow was coming, so I got really concerned, and, um, nervous that he was going to come while the snow was here and I wouldn't be able to get out of the house. So, we, it started snowing Tuesday and I started to panic um, and we decided that it would be better to go to Dakota's brother's house um, because he had a tub if, God forbid, I had the baby at the house or, um, or, and he is, his house is really close to Route 30, which is what we would have to get on to go to the hospital. That was in Lancaster. So, we stayed there. We got there Tuesday evening, and we stayed there until Thursday morning. Meanwhile, Tuesday night, Wednesday day, night, I was having contractions. I was cramping. So, I pretty much just laid down the entire time um, to try to prevent, because, like, movement and everything can make you progress. So I was trying to stay as still as possible, um, drinking plenty of water, all that good stuff. So then Thursday morning we go home and everything looks fine. I was still cramping, but I didn't think anything of it. We got home, the snow was gone, like everything was fine. That night we were sitting down in our living room watching TV and I had a contraction that made me like have to hold my breath and I couldn't talk to Dakota through it. And I, he said, I don't remember exactly, but he said I was making some sort of noise that made him realize that they were getting stronger. So after that happened, he was like, okay, I think like it's going to happen soon. So I'm going to go try to take a nap because he knew he was going to be up for a while while I was in labor. So we go upstairs. It's probably like 1030 at this point. And... Well, he's laying in bed. I'm like tossing and turning and doing all these different um, positions because it they were hurting and I couldn't stay still through it. So I had one that I remember hurt really bad and that was at 11.19 precisely. I remember that. I'll never forget that. And I was like, okay, I think I need to call the hospital because they were getting close but they weren't consistent. Um, the, one would be like five minutes apart, one would be like seven minutes apart. They would keep going back and forth. It wasn't consistently one or the other. So I call the hospital um, and, you know, they were like, okay, if you think you're, you're in labor, we can come check you out. Um, and if you're not far along enough yet, we'll just send you home, like no problem. We're on our way and they got so intense. The contractions were unbearable. Um, I remember just like grabbing the the handle up at the top of the car and like ripping on for dear life like trying to I don't know get through it they began to get three minutes apart in the car we had like a 30 minute drive to the hospital I it probably didn't take us that long because Dakota was driving like a maniac um but it felt like forever so we get to the hospital finally I had to take like two breaks as we were walking to the triage room because the contractions would literally like bring me to my knees. And uh, so we get into the triage room, they bring me back, um, still having obviously the really bad contractions, I just keep getting closer. And they made me change into my robe and all that good stuff and it seems like forever they made me wait but they're like okay we're finally gonna check you so i laid down which also is awful during a contraction and you have to stay still so they can check you and all that stuff so terrible um and she checked me and she was like oh my god you're seven centimeters and me and dakota just looked at each other like oh my god like i knew 
it, I was dilating and I was getting close, but I did not think I was seven centimeters already. When I was feeling the pain, I was like, I knew in my heart I didn't want to get an epidural. I wanted to do it completely natural so I could feel everything and like I was really convinced it was going to help me birth him because I could feel where he was at and all that stuff. And I was like thinking to myself, I was like, okay, I'm already at seven centimeters. Like the transition part, I was already in it. Like they weren't going to get worse than that. So I was like, okay, I can do this. I'm not getting an epidural. We're going natural. So we got into the labor and delivery room. They wheeled me over there. Um, and they checked me again, put the heart monitors on me, on my belly to um, listen to him to make sure he wouldn't be in distress or anything. And they were like, okay, uh, do you want to like lay here? What do you want to do? And I said, I need to get in the water. I originally wanted to get in the tub, but my water was already broken at that point. Um, I'm not sure when it broke. I didn't have the big gush like you see in the movies. I have no idea when it broke. I'm assuming before, like a little bit before I got the intense contractions. They got me in the shower and I pretty much just like kneeled, no, I like squatted down, my legs were spread and I had my hands like this and my head like this on um, the seat in the shower. And Dakota just took the shower head and was um, running hot water on my back to try to help with the contractions. And I don't know what it was about the water, but I was in there for maybe five minutes and I was ready to push. I remember sitting there with my head down and I had a contraction that made me push. Like I didn't do it on purpose, my body did it by itself. So I called my nurse over, which by the way, I had the most amazing nurses ever and we'll get into that. But I called her over and I said, I think I need to push. Like it, yeah, my, this contraction just made me push. I didn't try it, it just happened. And she's like, okay, let's move you to the bed. And they're like, okay, how do you want to lay? And I said, I guess we'll start on my back. I had no idea. So started on my back. Um, this is probably around like 3.30 I started pushing, I think, and uh, in the morning. And um, yeah, so I started on my back. That was okay and I guess I wasn't like I, he wasn't getting down very far they she said that I had a hard time getting him through my pelvis um or like past my pelvis bone or something like that and so she had me switch to being on all fours which was really hard for me it was really hard to hold myself up and go through that um so that I wasn't in that position long and she also said I wasn't pushing as well either um, I was getting better pushes on my back when I could hold my legs up. Um, so we ended up, my last and final position was on my side, on my right side. But yeah, the nurse and Dakota were holding my legs, and I would help too. I would hold him up also. Um, and in the meantime, like another nurse would be rubbing, pouring and rubbing mineral oil um, down there rubbing it to try to prevent tearing and I, I don't know exactly I think his head was just starting to come out and uh, the OB came in and um, she was this like huge light came down from the ceiling it wasn't like I, you couldn't see it it just looked like the ceiling and then she pushes its button and this huge light comes out and it's just right on everything down there and she like suits up and gets ready and I was like, shit, it's coming, like he's, he's almost out. And meanwhile, I've been pushing for two hours at this point, so I was exhausted. So when she got there, I got really excited and like motivated again to get him out. So she's, when she gets there, she tells me to, um, to let my uterus push to not physically do it myself. So when I would have a contraction, I wouldn't put, like, I wouldn't pull my legs up super hard. She would just tell me to let my uterus push him out, which was really hard to do because all you want to do when you're feeling that is push. And um, it's like when you have to make a bowel movement, like, can you imagine not pushing when you feel that? I don't know. It's like the same thing. Um, so she was like, don't push, don't push, because um, I had torn at that point, but I think she was trying to help me 
prevent tearing further. So we did that for, I think she was there for probably half an hour before he came out. Um, and yeah, he came out, he started crying right away. They immediately laid him on me and he didn't move off me for like an hour. Um, he was perfectly healthy, he didn't have jaundice. It was just, I just like, I, I feel like it was such a crazy moment and rush of adrenaline that I don't remember like too much besides like holding him and my mom and everyone who was there, like their reactions, Dakota was crying, uh, like all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, they just, they put him on my chest right away and wiped him off on me and, uh, and I was just holding him, and then my OB was like, okay, I need you to give me a little push again to, so we can get rid of the placenta. And so I did that, um, and after that, she just started stitching me up. I didn't really notice or pay attention because I had Jack in my arms, um, and I was watching everyone else reacting to him and taking pictures of him and all that stuff. So once you push the baby out, oh, yeah, I didn't have medication, so... Once you push the baby out, unmedicated stitches aren't anything. It didn't phase me at all. But yep, they did the delayed cord cutting. Um, that was really the only thing I requested. I didn't want to keep my placenta or anything like that. It was really smooth. It was really fast. I, that's, I know a lot of women are scared of not getting an epidural, but it goes so fast to you. Like, it hurts, obviously, but I feel like women that... Um, get medication sometimes I hear a lot of times it can slow down labor um so I really enjoyed a fast labor and you know it hurt but when I have another baby I'm definitely going to do it unmedicated again because as soon as he was out I was normal I could walk I could like do everything it was amazing um and like when you have an epidural you can't walk right away and I don't know it was just, it was really nice for me, and the pain was kind of traumatizing at first because I've never felt a pain like that in my life. So it was like a little scary at first, but as I got more confident and I like knew what to do, because like when you first start pushing, you don't know what to do, and uh, as it went on, I, I felt better and I felt more confident and like, let's get this kid out. So definitely gonna do it that time that way again next time I plan I do we do plan on having one more I don't know if I'll have any more than that I think two is enough there's really no more else to the story it happened really fast from 11 is when I started my contractions I gave birth at six so loved that can't complain about that at all um, but they said my nurse did say next time I'm pregnant that as soon as I start having contractions like intense ones I need to come in um, since I progress so fast. Um, not planning on having a second one anytime soon, but I plan to do the same thing for the next one as long as I can. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my birth story. I'm sorry it took me so long to get up. It's I'm staying at home with Jack and um, also working, if that makes sense. I babysit um, my boss's daughter and work from home so I have both of those things to juggle plus you know cleaning and cooking and everything else so and trying to stay sane and socialize and work out and everything so videos have kind of been on the back burner but I really want to start making them more and having Jack in them and Dakota and turn it into more of a family channel but yeah that's it I will see you guys next time